dear students a very good afternoon so today we will read and we will try to infer the meanings of a very beautiful profound deep a dark poem that you have that is it is the wind and nothing more written by edgar allan poe this is one of his best poems and especially in the field of literature this poem is regarded with high esteem so now this is uh, the title suggests that it is wind and nothing more means there was some other expectation probably the poet had thought something else it might not have might might not be the wind it might be something else which the poet has thought which the poet was expecting but it did not so it did not come to be so so let's see what the poet expected why did he expect it and how it was only the winds only the wind and nothing more so the beginning says that once upon a midnight dreary while i pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore so now the poet is telling that i am sitting one day and i was trying to find out some lore some some stories local stories which i had forgotten now you are trying to find out those things you are trying to remember those things which you have already forgotten which means this is flogging a dead horse there is no outcome of it but still the poet is doing so because he wants to get himself busy in that he want to keep his mind busy with something because he wants to forget some other things some other memories which are resurfacing in his conscious mind so that was the night the time was the night it was uh, dreary means bleak it was bitter cold outside and the poet was pondering over something what was it to find out those stories which he had already forgotten while i nodded nearly napping means the poet was about to uh, the poet was actually drowsing okay he was feeling a little bit drowsy and he was dozing suddenly there came a tap right then he heard someone tapping at his door now this tapping and the door both are symbolical tapping it is the resurfacing of your memories and tapping it is the knock which has two implications one this is external which proved false another one that is coming from within from your heart from your deep uh, subconscious mind there are something which are resurfacing and continuously knocking at your conscious mind that is the knocking which is presented here so the poet heard a, a kind of tapping as of someone gently rapping rapping at my chamber door to some visitor i muttered tapping at my chamber door only this and nothing more so in the beginning the poet thought that this tapping might must have come from a visitor who might have got lost and now seeking shelter that visitor is tapping at the poet's door in order to have an entry in order to spend the night in order to spend some time with the poet live with him and then don't know what will happen after that this is actually if you read between the lines and if you read the whole poem this is actually taken from raven the whole poem probability it has 12 stanzas you have only four so this is the memory that is actually trying to make its presence throughout the conscious mind of the poem and the poet is desperately trying to get rid of that kind of thought that kind of memory there are some reasons behind it 
shortly we will come to know. Oh, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate, each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. The poet is telling that distinctly, means it is very much clear for me that I could remember, I can remember what was there going on. What kind of uh, environment, what kind of uh, weather it was that was bleak, cold, beating cold, wind was blowing hard and the cold wind was cutting through the flesh. Right at that time it was midnight. Now such a December midnight, it is so unlikely that some visitor will come at your door seeking some shelter because there is no such cope that people will stay out in a December night. This is dreary weather, bleak weather. There is no such chance for any people or any person to roam outside and seeking shelter from uh, an unknown uh, house, from, a, from an unknown house or from an unknown uh, owner of the house. That is so unlikely. That is why the poet is telling that it was midnight December. Outside there was beating cold. And I presume that there must have been some visitor who is seeking shelter. You know and we know, we the readers, all of us, we know that this is so unlikely. But the poet is thinking, so why? Because he is desperately trying to think something else, not allowing those thoughts which are knocking at his subconscious mind to have an entry, to make its presence over his conscious mind, make him feel pain, acute pain, make him go through uncomparable, uh, I should say, uncomparable agony. Yes, that's the word I was searching here. Uncomparable agony. That was acute agony. The moment those thoughts were resurfacing in the conscious mind of the poet, this is the particular moment the poet was feeling too much sorrow. He was feeling uh, restful. He was feeling as if uh, something is coming out of me. It is like a lava. It is like it, it is burning. That sense, those memories, the more they are, uh, they are getting prominent, the more burnt I can feel inside. My heart is getting severed, getting burnt the more those memories are gathering there. So this is the reason the poet was trying hard, desperately, to get rid of these thoughts. And that is the reason he was thinking, he was considering us the thing in completely different point of view. Though it was completely uh, impossible for having a visitor at your door in the midnight, and it is December midnight, you can't even imagine that kind of thing, but still the poet is imagining so because he wants to keep his mind busy in thinking something else, not permitting those thoughts which are brimming, which are oozing out from his heart. Eagerly I wished to the morrow, yes, the poet was desperately waiting for the next day, for the, uh, for the break of the dawn, so that he can get rid of these thoughts. Vainly means there was no such a positive result. Vainly, I had sought to borrow from my books sarcees of sorrow. Yes. So probably someone had cut open the long sealed source of sorrow in the heart of the poet. And from that uh, uh, open source, sorrow is oozing out. It is inundating the poet's heart. The poet is feeling numb, he is feeling parched, and he is trying desperately to get rid of this. In order to apply some balm over it, he is trying, he is trying to keep his brain uh, busy in some other thoughts. These memories are just like embers which are burning there. It has a parching sensation, it has scorching sensation. Sorrow for the lost Lenore. Now we come to know about uh, 
the name of a person that is Lenore. For the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here evermore. Angel, some angels are naming someone, which means that person is with the angel. If a person is with the angel, which means that person is surely residing in heaven, which means there is no such corporeal evidence, corporeal existence of that person. That person, Lenore, about whom the poet is talking, has died. Her memory is resurfacing in the mind of the poet, and the poet is desperately trying to hide it. That is the poet is trying to do. Now he is telling the nameless here evermore, means no one will call her by that name here in this earth because she has died. Those angels are taking care of her. They are giving her names because they are liking her and she is so dear to the angels. Such what was her deeds while she, she, she was alive in this earth. That is how the poet is telling it. Deep into the darkness, fearing long, I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams, no mortal ever dared to dream before, yes. The poet is telling that I was in dark. In the dark depth, abysmal depth of my memory, if I have a peep, if I dare to have a peep there, I can see those things, I can dream those things which no one ever tried to see, ever tried to dream. I can have the memory of those time when I spend, the time when me and Lenore, we were together, the memory of those times is actually resurfacing in my mind, in my brain. They, they, they are, they were there in my subconscious mind, but they are continuously knocking at my conscious mind to have an entry. And the more these memories are coming in number, like, a, like, and like an avalanche, the more my heart is getting buried under it. But the silence was broken and the stillness gave no token. There was no such sign of the stillness from which I can find out who is there outside. Is it a visitor or this is something else which is coming from within? Is this an external source or this is coming from within an internal source? And the only word that spoken was whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore, merely this and nothing more. So the moment I whispered the name of Lenore, it got reverberated a thousand times in my heart. That this must have been Lenore. This must have been the memories which are associated with Lenore. The time which I spend with Lenore. And now because Lenore is no more here in this earth, those memories are coming back to me. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping somewhere louder than before. Means this time the memory is coming in large number. It is becoming more distinct. Surely, said I, surely there is something at my window that is now the poet is trying to find out something else. Because there was no one at the door, now he is thinking probably someone might have been tapping at the window pen. If there is no one at the door, there must have been someone at the window pane. This is not coming from within. This is an ex 